Meu nome é Servando Barreiro, a media artist. What I did is just explore the the, uh, the electromagnetic, thinking about waves and wireless networks, how the information goes, yeah, that is in the air, and how you can improve this communication, the antenna thing, and also the electromagnetic radiations that uh, all the electric machines uh, transmit. I've been hearing about this since uh, some time. Mm -hmm. Here in Berlin, there's many people like Martin, there's many people that is very interested in this and they are investigating a lot and they reach it really... It's not just uh, superficial levels of... Uh, taking an antenna and realize that, oh, this, we are surrounded by electric things. And this goes very further because they made a study in hardware to pick these things, uh, to pick like radio waves, uh, wireless waves, uh, GPS, uh, low frequency, and also developing free software to have uh, control and track all these uh, signals. I work in many different things. I, I, you know, the software pure data, mm -hmm. I'm a pure data programmer. I organize in Berlin the pure data user meeting. And uh, yeah, I do interactive installations that there's a camera, so you interact with the things. I work in the field of image, uh, computer vision, interactive stuff. So it's something in between image, programming, art in uh, installation and sound also. Would you describe what you do as applied arts or is it more like a new form of fine arts that just happens to happen with uh, media or what's the difference? I, to I, I think it's, it's a new form because I, I know many people that they are very good in this. They are known worldwide but uh, mm, yeah, many of them, they have to do other things to, to survive. That means that uh, it's uh, underground art. And many people has, uh, with technology, many people has uh, fear of technology. When they see cables and machines and antennas, it's like, oh my God, what is that mess? Like, take it out of my view. So people like the things less technological as, as possible and uh, yeah I have another point of view about but couldn't it. it be also the other way around that by having this internet and sort of like people liking gadgets and things that blink and that's something that maybe also on their smartphones you actually as an artist have a possibility to actually reach them easier as if you had to force them into a museum or a media festival it's, it's curious. I think the, the newer generations uh, are more interested in the technology things because when you are using internet for some years and when internet is giving you a lot of things, a lot of uh, what I know, it comes from a big part of it from internet because, well, I studied sound and electronics, but I'm self-taught. Uh, mm -hmm. So what I learned is... Uh, because of checking on forums and then I discovered this and this leads you to go one step uh, further, further. So you can, in internet, you can dive wherever you want to go. It's not like you go to a place and somebody tells you the thing. No, when you study fine arts, you know that mm -hmm. and dot. And, but in, in internet, yeah, well, we all know this. But when you make a reflection about it and about how good it is, uh, you have a big respect and big, big uh, admiration for the technology and the people behind the infrastructure, the network, different uh, things, the wireless communities thing. Uh, but yeah, but also what it happens sometimes is that in media installations, when the technology is not uh, um, so visible, mm -hmm. people forget to think about that. I mean, you see a some media installations, you see a screen, uh, you interact with it, but if you don't see the computer, the cables, the webcam and the infrared light, you don't think that it's a technological thing. You assume it as uh, more naturally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are you planning for tonight? Uh, yeah, we'll play a small performance at Help Six. Um, it's uh, something that I've been doing. 
I like um, analog sound, like uh, develop my own electronic instruments and um, play with it, but this is uh, one step further. So I connect the audio to an oscilloscope that is a machine that usually um, is for laboratory use and it represents the waveform of the sound. So when I connect this oscilloscope, like I just put the camera in front of the screen and I connect to a beamer, so uh, when I generate a sound, this sound generates a waveform and this waveform is displayed. So you can see the sound mm -hmm. somehow. The, you can establish an association between the waveform and the, this, how it sounds. So the you know, sine tone, like soft sounds have more rounded shape. And if you make a harsh, uh, sharp sound, you will see more corners, more triangular or square waveforms thing. It's interesting to see. And also I will use a coil that picks the electromagnetic frequencies. So I will, there's a whole spectrum, like mobile phones have a very high frequency sound and other machines like the screen of a laptop has a hum and well, to, to appreciate these things that usually are invisible and inaudible. So I will make it um, visible and also make sound with it. Okay, but the goal is not to have a pleasing musical concert, is it? I think it's pleasing. Uh, yeah, of course. it's not uh, traditional, it's not folk, it's <laughs> not uh, classical, but um, I think um, it could be considered noise, but um, yeah, the noise is a whole world also. It's, it's, it's not an unpleasant noise. It, it could be interesting to, to listen to it and appreciate the differences. Instead of uh, being notes and rhythm, there's no chords, no notes and no rhythm, but there's frequencies, there's sound, so timbrical characteristics. Mm -hmm. So there will be like really low frequencies and really high frequencies. So for those that uh, like a bit to explore in sound, I think they will like it. That's why I'm doing it, because uh, yeah, Brandon also saw it, the concert, oh, that's interesting, and that machine you were using, what is that? And is there a... They were speculating if there was an arpeggiator or something like that, because there were some sequences that, that they thought that was an arpeggiator. No, and it's all analog, pure analog uh, thing. All right. Yeah. Um, just one last question. Everyone gets kind of like um, your economic income or your way to survive comes from um, this kind of things. Oh. Um, but different. Sometimes I do interactive installations. I've been doing yeah in Norway. Also teaching. Sometimes teaching. Sometimes making an interactive installation or a live performance. Sometimes alone, sometimes with people collaborating. So the cool thing about Berlin is that it's full of artists, many media artists also. So I, I can run several projects in parallel mm -hmm. with audiovisual. That sometimes I sometimes I do audio, sometimes I do just video, or sometimes I just do the electronic things, cables, webcams, and thing. And uh, luckily. Putting this together with the cheap prices still in Berlin, one can survive here by doing that. Mm -hmm. But generally, like doing the performances, like each part where you do something enables you to continue whatever you're interested in. It's not like your, your performance is the product and the more you do it, the more money you make. No, no, it's not an no product. Like uh, here, for example, since it's what I love to do, analog synthesis and this kind of minimalistic visualization, like really strict brain connection, let's say. Since I love this and I know that uh, Brandon and Bengt also liked that, I said, hey, I could do this. Yeah. Hey, yes, do it. So it's just f for pleasure. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, in Berlin, is sometimes it's like this. In Berlin, you play many times for free but for pleasure. You meet your friends or, or for free beer, but then you document that and you can send to other countries 
festivals, whatever, say, hey, I have this concert, okay, oh, yeah, 1,000 euros, oh, yeah, perfect. And, and then, yeah, the money is somewhere else. Well, the yeah. money is everywhere, but here we know how it works. In the but um, I don't know your instruments, but basically the things you build, did you ever consider doing one as a prototype for, I don't know, a general gadget or instrument or tool or something? Uh, the, there's, there's one thing that I do together with Martin. Uh, because Martin uh, House, that is here, you will, uh, is a very interesting guy. He's like a master for me. So uh, once he, part of uh, exploration was one circuit, there was a board that uh, converts any external signal from a sensor into HID signal. Let's say uh, it's a board that you connect it into the computer and you, if you attach a sensor to this board, you give the computer the possibility to sense the reality mm -hmm. in a way similar than we sense the reality. So I think this is a very powerful thing. So yeah, Martin has many things, he's exploring in many fields, but I found this especially fascinating for what I was doing for media art. So I, decided, I told Martin, hey, what do you think if we uh, make this as a product somehow? Uh, so I make a website with a video explaining how it works. I coded some patches in PD, making plug and play, easy to use, multi-platform. And then uh, it's one of the things that I'm doing and teaching. It's uh, called Minitronics Workshops. So I, I teach the people an introduction of this software, pure data, this open source, multi-platform. So it's really cool because when I teach a workshop, Anybody can attend with any kind of uh, operative systems and everybody likes to plug, for example, a light sensor and then you move your hand over the sensor without touching and you are changing a sound like, like a theremin. Like, and then people like, wow, oh, this is really cool and it's cheap, cool and new, nice and yeah, I enjoy teaching and doing these things. What's it called? Mini-nomics, micro-nomics? Mini, no, mini-tronics. Mini-tronics, okay. Mini-tronics, yeah. The nomics would already be like the selling of the, pro yeah. <laughs> of the prototype. It's mini-tronics, like minimal electronics. Mm -hmm. Mini-tronics, yeah. Okay, that makes me happy, thank you. Hmm.